Good morning, and thank you, Chris. Uh, right, as Chris said, I'm just talking about digital marketing for publishers, and I'm specifically focusing on paid marketing activities rather than organic activities. So, just a little bit about who we are, Jellyfish. If you haven't come across us before, um, we have um, approximately 300 staff. We have a global presence headquartered in the UK. Uh, we have offices in the US, uh, South Africa, and a representation um, in uh, Japan as well. So we're worldwide. We have a quite broad offering um, across the digital mix. Um, PPC activities, display, SEO, social. We help companies improve their conversion rates. Uh, we have an analytics division, and we also build websites. We have a creative and development team and a video team as well. But the side that I work in um, is a specialist division, and we just work with publishers on a worldwide basis. Um, Jellyfish Connect itself was formed last year when the merger of Magazine Cloner um, and Jellyfish Publishing. And I'll just go on to talk a little bit about just about who we are, just as a bit of background. Um, we've got three main services. Uh, we support publishers with subscription marketing, and we um, help them run their digital marketing campaigns, selling print, digital, um, and app subscriptions, depending on what they, what they want. And we sell these worldwide using a range of, of different marketing channels. We also have um, some software, which is the Magazine Cloner platform, which allows publishers to create apps and digital editions and um, can serve them onto Apple, Android, and Kindle Fire um, apps and the app stores. And we also own and run a multi-platform newsstand called Pocket Mags, which also sells subscriptions for digital, um, digital magazines. And we also help and support publishers with their sales reporting as well. And we can integrate data from all the various app stores into one. And just a little bit about me and my background. I actually used to work in pub within publishing. I had 25 years working for a range of publishers around the world. Um, my specialism is digital marketing and subscriptions. Um, and I sit on various sort of committees um, around the world in the, and in the UK and um, support publishers and help and uh, encourage them to look at subscription marketing in a different way using new techniques. So going on to what I'm going to talk about, um, it's very much trying to introduce some ways that you can look at subscription marketing. I know it's, um, it's not necessarily a, a major thing in, the, in this region. Not many publishers actually sell pay subscriptions. A lot of copies are given away for free. But those of you who do, I'm hopeful that some of the ideas that I'll put in here are things you can either try yourselves or if you do use agencies, you can encourage them to use these if they're not already. The, the biggest question I always get asked is, well, why should I be running any paid for um, marketing activities if I'm already listing at the top of the organic rankings? And there's various reasons. The first one is you actually dominate that digital landscape. When somebody's actually looking for you in Google, if you have two um, presence, two is, one, two is better than one in digital marketing, and I'll come on and talk a little bit about that. There's, I've got an example here that shows you a search that I put in, which is for men's fitness magazine subscription. And you've got an example here that says you've got both um, a paid for ad and an organic ad there. Um, these are the two ads. But it's also really important that you can actually see alongside this, there's actually an ad there for a competitor, which is men's health, competitor to men's fitness. So if you didn't actually have those two ads there, your presence wouldn't be anywhere near as, as big in the landscape. And obviously, what you're wanting to do is sell and, and tell people about what your publication has to offer. So those two call to actions always will increase the total number of people you're going to get clicking through to your website to potentially order. And PPC, you only actually pay for when actually somebody clicks on it. So even if someone doesn't click on your ad, you're still, it's, it's effectively can be free brand advertising for you. PPC also allows you to control your messaging. So here's, a, here's an ad that we, this is one that we run for the week. Um, and it allows you to create a purpose-built, very, very focused um, sales message, which really could get the attention of your prospective subscribers. Um, in this particular case, um, you've got different things here on offer. The week, obviously, have a digital edition. You can subscribe to that separately, and there's a link in the ad to that. Um, you can sell a gift subscription if someone doesn't want to buy it yourself. These are purpose-built sales um, and advertising messages, and PPC allows you to do that far more than any organic activity can do. You can also control your competitors, and this is a particularly important thing in the digital world, because the digital networks actually will allow your competitors to bid on your magazine brand terms, which means that their ad could actually appear above yours in the organic listing. In this example here, I did a search for Architects Journal. You can see you've got a paid ad there, 
and their SEO ad, um, their SEO listing at the bottom. But you've also got a competitor sitting right above it. So without your PPC ad being there, you would be number three in that listing, and that potentially can happen um, within the digital environment. You also can't always capture everyone via SEO. It's a simple thing, it's known, and lots of tests have been done on this. Some people like to click on ads, other people like to click on, on, on SEO links. So it's good to have both in place. Um, now, Google would, you know, you'd say they might say this, that when a PPC um, advertising has stopped, the organic listings don't pick up all of that lost traffic. Um, and, and as I said, you'd think that Google would say that because obviously they make a lot of money off the back of people advertising with them. But actually, we have tested this, and we test this time and time again um, for our clients. And in various cases, this is a typical one, that we saw a 61% dip in the sales generated from PPC and only a 4% uplift in the SEO um, sales that came through. So you need to have both in place if you really want to maximize the volume of the subscriptions that you can get. PPC traffic also converts better. And the reason for this is that people who click on PPC ads are more likely, generally, to have a higher propensity to buy. And this is the reason. This ad is a PPC ad, um, which is all about focusing about subscriptions. It's at the top. The organic ad, lower down, um, this is a real case in the, for The Guardian, one of our clients. Um, not surprisingly, they're focused all about content. And they're going to get people who are not as far into the buying cycle um, and, are, and are looking for content type activities. So your top ad is much more likely to get somebody clicking through and subscribing um, much faster. So the next area I want to just focus on is um, talking about attribution and explain what I mean about that. Um, consumer purchasing behavior is changing quite rapidly. Here's just an example. Um, people will search using their mobiles, so they'll search on web, but they'll also go into shops. Um, they'll probably be looking at other, other magazines and newspapers and looking at advertising in those. All sorts of different ways that you can reach people nowadays. And the number of touch points that people actually um, are, 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 are um, going on before they actually convert to become a subscriber is increasing absolutely exponentially. I'm sure if you think just about yourself and what you do, you're going to look online, you might search on your mobile, you'll look at research, um, a particular product before you buy it, but you might go into a store to buy, or you might go um, from mobile to desktop to buy, and all of that is changing um, quite rapidly. So I've got some particular stats here for the OE. Um, obviously, although I some of the examples I've got later on of the UK, um, the same is the case across the world. Um, in this example, the percentage of people who are using a PC to research a product before they buy um, was 50%, and 33% um, similar stats for those who are researching before they buy on a mobile. That doesn't necessarily mean they're placing their order from that original search, but they're actually doing, using the online world to, to search first. And traditionally, a lot of people just say, OK, I'm going to look at the last click. If you're running an email campaign, you'll measure the success of your email campaign based on how many people actually ordered off the back of that email. But if you just look at it that way, you may not necessarily be getting the best results out of your whole marketing activity. And attribution is the credit that we give each of those touch points or clicks in a user's journey towards their eventual sale or conversion to be a subscription. A lot of the publishers, there's an example here, look at, you know, you might be running some space ads within your magazines, you might be running advertising in other, in other publications, in newspapers, you might be running some email campaigns, and everybody looks at the cost per acquisition that you're getting for each of those channels in isolation. But if you are not looking at everything across, across themselves together and actually analyze the impact that one campaign and one channel might have on another, you might actually not necessarily be getting the full value out of all your marketing activity or understanding what impact one has. So something over here might be helping over there. And I've got some real life case studies of, of these. Uh, in the UK, we work with Hearst and we run a lot of their PPC activity. And I've got some examples here of all the different touch points and interactions that now play their part in customers' journeys towards that eventual subscription sign up. So, a lot of people say, well, how do you measure all of this? Do you have to have expensive platforms? And no, you don't. It's quite simple. You can extract data from um, AdWords if you're running PPC campaigns, and also from Google Analytics. Um, and pretty much that's something that anybody who's running digital activity will have access to. 
So here's a particular case study for this, this case for Run as well. This is focusing just on PPC. I'll go on in a minute to talk about some other digital channels. And this just simply shows how the number of touch points, which is the number of clicks that somebody's actually going through before they eventually convert to becoming a subscriber, is really increasing. 24% of the subs from, that came from, um, from this Run as well campaign, from their PPC campaign, has now come from users who've interacted with two or more PPC ads. And that's a 41% increase year on year. And here's an example of a typical journey. That one at the bottom, you can see paid search. Somebody actually clicked on it an ad three times before they converted. In this case, two shopping ads and one generic ad. And in some extreme cases, we were even seeing 2% of customers now actually clicking on five different PPC ads before they eventually convert. And that's, although small, you know, small numbers, but it's still almost 300% increase year on year. And that's only going to keep growing as people hop, hop around and use different devices to search and look around. Again, here's some typical conversion paths at the bottom. Um, and these are all just extracted simply from Google Analytics. Um, what I was saying earlier about making sure that you're bidding on your brand, um, a lot of people say, well, I should, why, should, why do I need to do that? I've got organic. This shows that without bidding on your brand, 16% of conversions might not have necessarily come in in the case of this particular campaign for Runners World. Um, in this case, the, the um, conversion path at the bottom, somebody started with a generic ad but actually converted actually on a brand ad. But non-brands often start, uh, non-brand ads often start user journeys as well. This is using your content to actually start marketing your publications and PPC can actually work um, and to help them do this. In this case, uh, without generic ads, starting off a user's journey, in this case again for Runners World, 11% of the total subscriptions might not have come in. Um, and 83% more users are now engaging with Runners World through a content ad before they decide to actually click on a brand ad to finally subscribe. And what do I mean by this? This is a typical um, user journey that we look at. So in this case, someone was searching for Runners information, nothing to do with the magazine at all. They then get presented with an ad, a PPC ad, which talks about exactly what they were looking for, Runners information, and then presents them with Runners World magazine, but also, when they click through to the landing page, it gives them some free content they can download immediately before they actually start receiving the first issue, in this case, of a print magazine subscription, and they can download this. And this isn't new content you're having to create, this is just packaged up content that, from back issues that somebody can download as soon as they've ordered. Similar case, marathon training plan someone was searching for. Send them to an ad which talks about they're running a marathon, there's a free training plan guide. If they click through, they then go to a landing page on the website which says, if you subscribe today, you can get access to that free training plan as soon as, as, soon as you've subscribed. So ultimately, obviously, it's all about how much money you're gonna make and how many subscriptions you're gonna generate. In this particular example, the volume of subscriptions increased by 86% by just looking at how we were measuring things in a different way. And the average cost for acquisition fell by 47%. So if you are running your own PPC campaigns, make sure you're looking at the AdWords performance on an any click basis, not last click, and also extract those conversion paths data and actually try and make an understanding of actually how your users are, are, are taking their journey towards their eventual subscription. I've got a couple of other examples here um, of different types of uh, digital marketing. This is a Google sponsored promotion case study for Red Magazine. If you don't know what they are, it's a relatively new form of advertising um, which directs ads at people who have a Gmail account. It's a bit, bit big brotherish, and it's a bit scary in one sense, but it's quite good if you're a marketeer. You can basically target people who have a particular domain in their inbox. So if they've received an email from one of your competitors, you can target based on that. Or if somebody has searched for um, particular, a particular keyword and they have that within, an, within the content of their emails that they receive in their inbox, you can target based on that. And you can also target based on demographics. And it's just an example of the ads that are there. So when we ran this campaign for Red, when we started testing it, we actually only got two subscriptions directly from the ads that we were running. So if we'd actually just looked at the last click and said, you know, this is what, what it's about, we would have probably turned that off and said it's not successful, it's not converting well enough. But when we looked at the impact that the campaign was having as a whole on other activities that we were doing on a broader basis, and particularly in the PPC search campaign, the results were quite different. 
And actually what we saw during the time that that GSP campaign was running, the subscription volumes increased by 77% from the PPC activities, while the CPA generally came down by 21%. So it was all about looking at and understanding what the impact of one channel is having on another, and this is obviously creating more brand awareness for the product, getting people to start looking, and actually then clicking through when they then get presented with a PPC ad, or they start searching for something afterwards. Similar, um, similar case study here, but this is using a different marketing channel, in this case the Yahoo Gemini ads. Um, these are um, different types of ads. They're more native advertising that appear in the Yahoo news stream. You can target just by interest in these, and it's, there's, there's further targeting that's going to be coming soon, and these are sort of slightly in their infancy, but um, present different well. Similarly, um, this, in this case study, the subscription volumes increased by 179% during the time that we were running this activity, and this is across the board from the whole campaign, and the CPA fell by 38%. We also always have had to take into account seasonality because there's certain times of year, particularly with a, this is a, obviously a um, health magazine, a lot of people start at the start of January are looking to get fit so that in January your conversion rates might be higher than there might be other times of the year. So we looked at seasonality. But similarly, it was a 31% increase year on year um, in the volume of subscriptions we were getting and a fall in the um, cost of acquisition by 13%. So the last bit of my presentation is really focusing about remarketing, and I think, despite me talking about subscription activities here, I think even if you're just dri driving traffic to your web own website, remarketing is something you should definitely be putting in place because it can be a very, very cost-effective way to um, make sure you're reaching as many people as possible and um, maximizing your, your return on investment. So if you're not sure what remarketing is in the digital world, it's a basically somebody who might have visited your website and left without buying or without taking an action. Remarketing allows you to connect back with them and encourage them to come back again. So optimizing your remarketing, because obviously you paid to get them there once and you know they have an interest, optimizing your remarketing is one of the best ways you can improve your return on investment from all your digital marketing activities. Just some examples on a simple level. I'm sure you've um, probably experienced this yourself. If you go on one website, you can get stalked around the web and you get presented with different ads. The Google Display Network, you, put, you simply put some tracking code on your website and you can then run, this is a text ad at the top there, or there's a, a more image-based ad, image ad there at the bottom, um, and this is allowing you to present ads on different websites um, people subsequently visit after they've come to your site to encourage them to come back again. It's very good not only for sales, but it's also really good for brand awareness, and there's two different ways you can measure these. Um, in this case, this is um, for a consumer client of ours, um, these, are, these are anonymized because I'm not allowed to share data from all of our clients. Um, this, um, if you just looked at the subscriptions you were getting from the clicks, in the first case, the text ad at the top was 24 subscriptions and an image ad only got 17. But you can also look at the, what's called the view-through conversions, which is somebody who actually looked at the ad but didn't necessarily click on it. But you can track those back as well. In this case, the image ad, um, you got an additional 99 subscriptions that came from running this activity. And a similar um, case here for a B2B magazine as well. You can also get very granular with what you can do on, on your remarketing um, and to make it even more cost effective. And one thing we always recommend is to target visitors who've hit your shopping basket, or effectively your, your abandoned basket. Lots of people start that sign up process but don't eventually go on to actually order. You know they're interested so you need to make the most of, of getting back in contact with them to get them to finish the payment process. So here's just a, an example here of targeting general site visitors. Somebody, if you just remarket to people generally, you might not get much back. The CPA on here was $142. But if you then go through and actually only target those people who si start a uh, sign-up process, that cost of acquisition comes down from 142 to 67 on the f if you start this, in this case, is a four-stage um, payment, pr payment funnel process. The first page, $60 $67, it then goes down to $19, and it then goes down to $13 as that cost of acquisition comes down as you're being more granular with your targeting. You can also now run um, what's called remarketing list for search ads, and this allows you to target somebody when they next go back into Google and search again. So they've come to your website, they've looked at your content, they've then gone off again and then searched for something else again. And you can target these people in a, in a dis as a distinct audience um, when they next go into Google. So 
Generally, you probably, if you have a niche magazine, you would never be able to afford to bid on a term as generic as magazine subscriptions. But if somebody has actually been to your site and then goes to search again within the Google network, you could probably um, run a cost-effective campaign um, using that term if you, if you needed to. So here's, again, just some examples here of that CPA with a standard search campaign of being £7.58 cost per acquisition when you're really granular and you're targeting and you're just looking at what's coming through from the remarketing list for search, that cost for acquisition comes down to 198. Significant drop off. There's other ways you can target in a granular way through Google Analytics as well. Um, they, this allows you to target people based on the behavior that they exhibited when they were visiting your site. So there's a couple of examples here. You can target people who spent um, a certain amount of length of time on your site. So they were, you know, they were interested in your content. And you can then exclude those who literally bounce in and out um, within 30 seconds. Lots of people visit, didn't mean to, and whiz out again without any interest. If you go and start running a campaign and try and encourage them back, it's wasted traffic, wasted money. You can also target people who looked at individual pages on your site or a certain number of pages on your site. So you're going to know that those who've interested in this case um, said five or more pages, they're going to be far more interested in what you've got to offer. So if you can encourage them to come back again, they're much more likely to order from you. You can also target the, based on exactly what pages and content they looked at. So you know an exact, exa exactly what topic they're interested in. And you can then run an ad on that similar topic and get them to come back and order. But one word of caution with these groups, they are, they are by their nature more difficult to convert. Trying to get them to sign up to an annual subscription is going to be difficult, so we always recommend testing ways of getting these people in with a lower, with a lower commitment offer, which might be either be a lower priced offer or a trial offer um, that just gets, encourages them to come in. You can also remarket and reach people through Facebook and Twitter. Someone's come to your site when they open up their Twitter account or they log into their Facebook account, you can actually serve ads to them in that environment as well. So if you can capture all these people and encourage them to come back in all sorts of ways, um, you can reach out, whether people are, similarly, whether people have looked at particular content, you can run an ad that encourages them to come back with, with similar content, um, give them special offers, or even cross-sell other things. Um, I know the next topic's about events. If you know that somebody was interested in your, in your magazine, didn't convert to a subscription offer, why not then market uh, your upcoming event to them? So just in summary, just sort of five simple things to think about to help you maximize volumes and your return on investment. Even if you have a very strong organic presence, running PPC ads can absolutely help drive your volumes and, and, and in a cost-effective way. Definitely test the impact of lots of all the different channels that are out there. There's new things coming out from Google and there's new things coming out from Bing all the time um, and they're helping and they're testing things before we actually start being able to run them. And that all helps drive down your cost of acquisition. It's definitely worth trying new things. Consider all the different touch points that people are now making in that journey towards their eventual subscription. There's lots of different interactions. It's no longer a simple start and finish of a journey. They're hopping about. And measure that um, and the impact of one what one channel might be having on the other. And also make sure you're optimizing all your remarketing activities and using all those different channels that are now available, and there's more and more new things coming out all the time. So um, that's it in summary. Thank you very much for your time.